just brief introduction of my background, a little bit about Accenture, and then I'm going to talk about some research we've done. And a, a little bit about the, the work we're doing with Chemaxon, but I think you know, the way I'll try to position and frame it is, is based on a perspective we have, based on talking to a, a, a lot of pharma and biotech companies, and, and maybe give you some food for thought and some possible new directions uh, that the industry is going. And I'm um, then happy to answer any questions you have. So um, as Aurora said, um, I'm managing director at Accenture. I'm our global practice lead for our life sciences business. Um, my background is medicinal chemistry and computer science. I was a synthesis chemist. Uh, I realized making stuff was dangerous after a couple of explosions and went more towards the, the research informatics path. And, and I've worked in a number of, of companies, ranging from cheminformatics to bioinformatics to uh, patient data and applications. So in some respects, my career has kind of mirrored the way the pharma industry is going with the way we're trying to integrate data and the challenges we face in drug discovery. So five things to remember from this talk. And if there's only five things you remember, these are them. Cloud, pre-competitive, externalization, componentization, and, and something at Accenture we call the new that I'll explain. Just, just in terms of, of who Accenture is, for those of you who have not heard of the company, we're really big. That's probably the summary of this slide. Um, over 400,000 employees. Um, we have just over 16,000 in life sciences. Uh, Size-wise, the company was about $35 billion in revenue last year. Uh, more than $2 billion of that came from just our life sciences uh, research practice. Um, we, we really operate at, at the heart of, of the critical problems that our customers and our clients face and have a long-standing relationship with many of our clients. So, you know, I, I think that's really, I just want to point that out because it sets some of the background um, for the current uh, slides I'm going to talk about and, and some of the thoughts and research we've done in the industry. Um, you know, specific to our life sciences research practice, um, probably not a surprise. These are the types of activities we engage with clients on. Everything from working with them on new technologies, uh, implementing software that they have, working with many um, of the partner organizations that they work with, such as Chemaxon, um, as well as doing uh, strategy work for them. There's no question that the pharma industry is, is struggling. Um, it takes a, a long time and a lot of money. Depending upon you know, how you interpret the Tufts data, it's anywhere from one and a half billion to three, almost 2.6 billion in over a decade to bring a new drug to market. Um, the budgets to support the systems, um, the staff, especially on the IT and the, and the research informatics side, they're not changing. They're flat for the most part to declining in 95% in of organizations. So something's got to give because the, the challenges that organizations have, managing the information, the collaborations, et cetera, are, are only getting larger from a scope perspective. We, we think we can, there's a way to help change that paradigm by going to a different business model that I'll talk about um, that is gained some, has gained some traction uh, in the industry and in research specifically over the last several years, and that's going to a pre-competitive approach. Um, we've seen a lot of pre-competitive collaborations um, in the industry over the last several years, and, and just you know, from my perspective, when I was in the laboratory as a medicinal chemist, I couldn't even talk to the people in the laboratory next door, let alone in another company. But the industry has really changed and started to embrace pre-competitive collaborations. Um, we think that combined with cloud technology, platform thinking, that this could actually give us a new way to maybe solve some of these problems, and that's what I'll talk about. So about three years ago, two and a half, three years ago, a number of our large pharmaceutical clients came to us and, and started talking about this. I mean. Everybody's probably heard of the Pistoia Alliance, Altro Foundation. A lot of the organizations have been working together already in a pre-competitive fashion. Um, a number of those large pharma companies came to Accenture and said, we all have the same challenges. We all have the same problems. We're all using the same software for the most part. The differentiator between us is not the systems we implement so much as it is our own data and how do we interpret that data. So given the fact that we're all spending money on kind of the same thing, you know, is there an opportunity to really join forces and do something that's unique and different? And they asked us to go you know, figure out, you know, was their instinct correct? You know, was there enough commonality between the problems that each of these organizations were facing? Um, so over the following two and a half years, up until about maybe four or five months ago, um, 
Our, my, my colleagues at Accenture, myself included, spoke to more than 40 pharmaceutical and biotech companies around the world. They range from the, the very large ones to the very small ones. And the interviews we conducted were um, research IT, research informatics, and, and also the business stakeholders, heads of research, heads of research, heads of chemistry, heads of biology, et cetera. So both the IT function as well as the business function. And this slide really summarizes the, the data that we got back from all those interviews combined onto one slide. Um, I, I generally consider that the bottom two bars, the red and the yellow one, those colors are, are pretty true, I think, um, to, to reflect the views of the research IT departments and research informatics. So they're struggling with a common set of challenges. There's still some data in paper. Some organizations still don't have their databases integrated. You know, it's 2018, I'm, I'm kind of stunned that organizations that don't have chemistry and biology integrated, but they don't. Um, we interviewed organizations that uh, took over a year to set up an ELN to enable external collaborators to share data. Um, a lot of manual analysis is being done. The cost to maintain the infrastructure is continuing to increase. So these are the things that the organizations also, they, they either want to do less of or stop. And then the, the top bar that's in the green kind of really summarized the perspective of the internal business stakeholders, the heads of research and, and the researchers themselves, who they, they, you know, they want these collaborations to work better, more seamlessly. Um, they all read about the new, you know, the latest hype phrases and buzzwords, but you know, they want to try it. If they see their colleagues in another pharmaceutical company, are trying a new algorithm in artificial intelligence on chemical libraries, well, they want to try it too. But they want to try it kind of the same way they try stuff on their smartphone. They want to download it from an app store, apply it to their data. They don't want to hear from the IT department that's going to take a year to implement this new algorithm and try it on their data. Um, there's more data types that are coming to this. Not only genomics information, um, more image data, but the challenge is just increasing in terms of the amount of data that has to be increased or and analyzed. And they just need to get the better results faster. So there's a lot of pressure on the IT department to do more with the budgets they have. If you're ahead of research, you know, you don't really don't want to hear, it takes a long time to implement software. That, that's what they're paid for. But what you do want is to try these new technologies, um, get access to your data faster, have a better user experience. Um, and I'll talk about that in a second. But the Generally, when we've gone back to the organizations and summarized this and presented to them, within about five minutes, you know, the head of research says, you can put my logo on the top of this slide. This is exactly what we're experiencing. So we've seen a lot of, of commonality when we've gone back and talked to the organizations. When, when we get into, you know, what's their wish list look like, and especially in talking to the researchers, um, it's kind of represented and summarized on the right-hand side. And it, and it looks like a smartphone for a reason. You know, we have a gener the generation of researchers entering the, our, our companies and the laboratory have a different ex expectation around usability and user interface. Um, I I, last, about six months ago, I gave a, a talk at Salesforce at their um, users meeting on the West Coast. And it was attended by about 60 research IT leaders in pharma and biotech and CIOs. And one of the questions I asked them was, you know, for all of you who are hiring, you know, newly minted researchers in the, let's say, bachelors to PhDs in their early to mid-20s, how many of them are coming to you saying they love the systems they're using when they, they enter the commercial workforce? Nobody said anything. Dead silence. The, the reality is most of the systems that are in use in pharma today are 10, 20, 25 years old on the research side, at least from a usability standpoint. Because I know, because I work with some of those companies and some of the systems that I implemented 25 years ago are still in use. So, you know, the expectation is there's a lot more we can do from a usability standpoint in terms of that modern user interface that our researchers expect, and there's no reason why they shouldn't have it. So that's a big part of, of kind of where the future, where we think the future is, is enabling that. Um, also have to enable a secure environment. Um, so the data can be easily shared externally with collaborators, um, much like an, an app store approach to new technologies, new algorithms, such as artificial intelligence and machine learning that can be tried very quickly. Um, talked about the modern user interface and user experience. And 
in, in today's cloud environment, there is now an acceptance more, more so in research. It's just starting. Um, other parts of pharma companies have adopted cloud technology faster than research. It's been on the commercial side. It's been in manufacturing. It's been on the clinical side. Um, even you know, it, with Accenture's experience, we stood up a pre-competitive cloud coalition of, a, of about 10 major pharmas six years ago to share data in a cloud environment. But there's a lag. You know, it, only in, in relatively recently are we seeing um, CIOs being willing to do that on the research side. But we think by using the, a cloud architecture, um, we can set up and there's an opportunity to do this in a pre-competitive fashion um, where there's shared cost infrastructure amongst each of the companies. To, to talk a little bit about you, you know, where this vision is going and these conversations we're having with the pharmaceutical companies, they're summarized in the next two slides. Um, the blue represents what the organizations are doing today. And much like the talks you, you've heard so far over the day, these are the applications that, that researchers are using, whether it's ELN, uh, entity registration of small molecules, large molecules and biologics, um, assay data management, capture, analysis, et cetera. None of that changes. But as we move into a modern way of platform thinking and take advantage of modern technologies, we absolutely have an opportunity to wrap this in a, in a cloud infrastructure, put the plumbing around the applications, much like we have on a smartphone, where there's the plumbing and the infrastructure to share data seamlessly and easily amongst applications without an, a research IT or research informatics department hardwiring those things, which is what they're doing today. And it's basically just wasting resources. And in addition to wrapping it in, in the plumbing, the cloud, the plumbing for data ingestion, data analysis, and data transfer, putting the security around it that exists today to enable subsets of the data to be easily shared with external collaborators without taking you know, months or a year to get the environment set up to do this. So the technology exists to do this today. Um, and in a shared cost model, there's a real opportunity for, for pharma clients to basically, again, focus on their research, focus on their data, and in terms of the infrastructure and the applications, you know, share those costs with their peers who are already using the same technologies. I, I mentioned something called the new. And, and this slide really summarizes that. And it's, it's that focus that the heads of research and the new researchers have to utilize new technologies, uh, improve that user experience, bring these new technologies very, very easily and quickly into the environment that they have their data. A big part of that is usability. And we've talked quite a bit with our clients about the concept of the appification of the user experience. And much like, you know, on our, our devices today, we can have better user, user interfaces, um, commonality between different applications from a data flow and analysis perspective. There's no reason we can't do that in the research space. Um, it does require applications being broken down to a lower level. So at the API level and to microservices. And we've been talking to, much like we've been talking to a lot of the, the pharma companies, We've also been talking to a lot of the ISVs and the technology providers in the space and talking about this vision you know, about if their components, if their applications, if their technology can be built to standards, whether it's for entity registration, biological data capture, um, genomic data handling, and if we can access all those components through microservices, in theory, we can put that common user interface on top of it. It also gives the clients the ability to plug and play components much easier than they're doing today. Um, it's not fantasy. We've actually worked with one pharma company to prototype some of this, uh, a large pharmaceutical company. And we're also working with Chemaxon to work with them on their APIs, um, bringing them to microservices, all the components that are necessary to manage small molecules, biologics, um, from a rendering perspective, from an entity uh, registration perspective, and trying to define what those standards look like. And in a pre-competitive role, those standards could be published, and vendors could make their wares available via that plug and play standard. So it's this environment where, from a user perspective, we believe we can have a lot of consistency, have a modern interface that's easy to use. From a, the pharma research IT perspective, they'll have the ability to, to plug and play best of breed tools and technologies into this environment. And, and so far, um, 
I think we're excited as we talk to other services companies, as we talk to pharma companies and ISVs about what this, what this future might look like. And you know, at the end of it, we're trying to fundamentally change the way research informatics you know, is being done, and we think the technology exists to do it today, and that the industry is willing to embrace it. And in, you know, if, if this vision comes to fruition, what we really imagine is this, this cloud-based pre-competitive environment of consumers on one side, the pharmaceutical, biotech companies, the CROs, the academic medical institutions who, who could actually be both consumers and producers of, of content or, or technology or analytics. And on the other side, the producers, the software companies, the content providers, the services organizations that can provide their wares via these you know, published standards where their technology can fit into, giving the pharmaceutical companies the option to implement best of breed technology much more easily, much more cost effectively than they are today. That's it. I hope I uh, gave you something to think about. And um, I'm happy to uh, answer any questions. You've heard Paul's presentation earlier from Amazon. And it sounds like for the user, the result looks pretty much the same. What would you say are the differences between your approach, their approach? It's, um, it's hard to answer that because we're also working a lot with Amazon. Um, so very aware of, of some of the things that Paul was talking about. Um, I, I, it's very similar, absolutely a, a very strong level of alignment. Um, one of the things I can tell you is, in as part of this research, we've worked with um, pretty much all the cloud providers and spent a lot of time with them. Uh, the large three, Microsoft, uh, GCP, from Google and um, AWS, as well as some of the smaller uh, specialty ones. And Accenture works with all the cloud providers. Um, we're actually doing, much like we're working with ChemAxon in defining some of these standards, we've also made a decision to work really closely with, with AWS. Um, and a couple of reasons for that, we just weren't looking for a kind of commodity cloud provider to work with. It was really our belief that they had the deepest understanding of the needs in the life sciences space. Um, so there's really nothing I could add to what Paul said, except to say that's very consistent with this vision, and we're actually doing some prototyping with them right now.